With the media landscape changing so dramatically, students can often wonder where they'll fit in. Today we talk new technology, trust in the media, and diversity. I'm Rosanna Klawi, and this is The Chat. So we're here with Willow Bay, the current director of the journalism program at USC, and the future dean of the Communications and Journalism School. So how does it feel to be appointed the first female dean of the school? It's extraordinarily exciting. It's also surprising. I mean, I when I kind of took a look back, I realized, oh wait, there hasn't been a woman dean at the school. And this is a university and a school that really empowers all of us, right, to live up to our potential and certainly empowers women to live uh, up to their potential. So it was kind of exciting and a bit of a surprise to be um, passing through that milestone. Yeah, so and also kind of looking at journalism at large and kind of the media industry after kind of a vitriolic election season and kind of the consequent, mm -hmm. you know, information wars we had, you know, the trust in media is kind of at an all-time low. How do you suggest that students, the next generation of fledgling journalists, kind of rebuild that trust? Mm -hmm. Or do we just need to kind of evolve into a new role? Well, I think earning trust is a critical responsibility of each and every one of us who are journalists. And I think that happens one reporter, one story at a time, right? And it happens by producing accurate, ethical, intellectually rigorous, timely, and relevant journalism. That's how you earn people's trust. You also earn people's trust by listening, by listening carefully, by listening with intent, by listening for what's not being said as much as what is. And that's how you build trust in communities, by being there and, and by listening um, and by treating it as a really sacred responsibility to tell other people's stories. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's possible, by mm -hmm. the way. I think that's possible. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, also Partly I think it's possible because I see all of you and I see the work you do and I see the um, mindfulness and intent with which you do it and I know uh, how hard we work to teach and train our students um, in foundational principles of ethical and accurate journalism alongside the contemporary and emerging um, tools and technologies that, that we need for modern day journalism. Yeah, and what do you think the most effective way of teaching journalism, communications, public relations is? Oh, that's a simple question. What's the most? What's the most that's effective? <laughs> yeah. What's the most <laughs> across yeah. all of us? I mean, I, look. I think one of the things that we do extremely well here at Annenberg, across all of our programs, and that's the thing that is most different for me when I assume the dean's role is that now I I speak for all of our programs. So I speak for communication, as you address in the questions, communications, public relations, journalism, public diplomacy, and and more across the breadth of all of our programs. And one of the things that I think we do so well here is leverage our network of connections, both scholarly and professional, to create a really rich and robust academic life for our students that teaches them the kind of critical thinking um, skills, for example, in the communications program and the hands-on journalism and public relations skills in that in that program and it's that combination of what goes on in the classroom and what goes on outside the classroom that I think it, it distinguishes the school. Yeah and you know there's a convergence of platforms almost mm -hmm. you know newspapers are leading the charge on virtual reality most major TV stations have a really strong web presence mm -hmm. you know in print kind of do you think that students of Annenberg should strive to be generalists and kind of have experience in all those fields or to be specialists and to be experts in like a sole field, kind of going out into this? this I don't think there's one right answer to that question. Mm -hmm. What I do think is that um, all of our students should have um, a technological facility, right, to be able to uh, be in command of the current tools, but also to understand, as you all do better better than any other generation be before them, how fast this change is happening and how new tools emerge <laughs> you know, daily. And so it's a facility and, and a real mastery, actually, of contemporary news production or communications um, content creation tools, but also um, a, a sense of kind of fearlessness about tools that are emerging, right? So it's not just the tool, it's 
looking at the tool, assessing how it works, and then understanding and appreciating how it can be deployed for good journalism or good and effective communications strategies and tactics. And then maybe even taking it one step further and figuring out, okay, what are the best practices we've learned on doing that and being able to lay down a set of best practices for those tools going forward. So when I think about um, specialists or generalists, I now think that's just foundational. And then I don't think there's a right answer for whether you should be a specialist or a generalist. I think an accumulation of a body of knowledge of con around an area of content, around a scholarly area of expertise, is really important. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't go into the media center and say, you all have to be specialists, or no, forget about it, you all need to be generalists. I think there's a lot of room um, within that space to chart your own course. Mm -hmm. And you know, speaking of tools of kind of new developments, um, I'm not sure if you've heard, but the Washington Post has actually developed an AI that does yep. news writing. It's called Heliograph. There's a lot of there's a lot of AI um, mm -hmm. and news bots um, being deployed in in the industry. I think it's is it I can't remember if it's Reuters or yeah. um, or the AP uses them, Financial News uses them, some sports news uses them. Um, it's common. Do you, do you think we should be? I mean, not be afraid, but do you think that students should kind of invest their skills in a certain sector because there is that kind of worry, maybe not 10 years from now, but maybe a bit further on in our careers, that automation may become an issue. Well, automation's coming, and automation's coming to, to the media industry as it is coming to other industries. I do not believe that automation is going to wipe out the vast majority of, frankly, content creation jobs or journalism jobs, because I do think um, creative, uh, thoughtful, nuanced content creation, whether it's whether it's journalism or other forms of content creation, um, are certainly going to continue to be the dominant mode of content creation going forward. Not that they won't be supplemented, and in some cases replaced, but I don't mm -hmm. think we're going to see a mass replacement of content creation jobs um, by you know AI AI powered bots um, anytime soon. Let's hope not. Um, <laughs> okay, so also let's talk diversity. But but yeah. but I think it's really important that we study them, mm -hmm. that we understand them, that we work with technologists to develop them. Because mm -hmm. I don't know if you've he heard me say this before, but one of the things that I say a lot is that I want journalists and and technologists, right, programmers or others, to be working together because I really believe that new tools uh, are best developed for journalists when they are shaped by the values of journalism and the needs of journalists. Yeah, you can reconcile the two. It, uh, it can be done. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, in terms of kind of diversity in the newsroom, that's another issue kind of moving forward, you know, people need to, to kind of focus on, um, you know, 17% of all newsrooms are minority journalists. What is Annenberg doing to support and protect minority journalists? So we've developed, it's, it's one of the things that we look at really carefully here, and it's not just for journalism, it's across all our industries of practice. Because um, I, I, I might actually make the case that I see in many in, in many instances, and look, I'm going to see the more proactive um, and be aware of the more proactive companies in this space who are who are really working in some interesting ways to diversify their their workforces and their newsrooms. So I tend to I, I'm an optimist anyway, but I tend to see more of the progress. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm always looking to people who are, are making successful strides to incorporate some of their best practices here. So it's something that as a school we're vested in, but it's something that I'm personally very vested in. And I think about our pipeline, right? Mm. I think about the students entering these, these fields of study, and I, feel, and I think about who we are um, sending out uh, to newsrooms and other other you know public relations and, and corporate communications um, companies um, from here, and so we have been increasing our outreach to public high schools with our high school journalism day. But our high school journalism day now includes public relations, so because the public relations field is really in dire need mm -hmm. of diversifying as well. So introducing those two professions 
to high school students, who in many cases are already on their student papers, um, is a really critical thing in getting them um, some experience with some of the tools and technology that, that our students here have access to. So that's our pipeline. And then making sure that we're sending out into the industry a diverse, well-trained, ethical, accurate um, group of journalists and communicators. We've also created professional programs in our fellows program, our Annenberg Leadership Initiative here in the newsroom to train early career professionals who come from diverse backgrounds um, to gain leadership skills in our newsroom, in our media center, um, to prepare them to really advance more quickly in their careers in leadership in the media business. So those are just some of the things that, that we've been working on some of the things that we've been, been thinking about. Okay, awesome. And you're excited for the future? I am excited for the future. Okay, then. Anything okay. else to add? or? Um, no, it's just I'm proud mm. to be continuing the legacy. We've had two extraordinary deans mm. in the recent history of this school, in Dean Cowan and Dean Wilson. And I feel really lucky to be um, advancing their mission as well as charting uh, future for the school. Okay, thank you very much. Willow Bay, the future oh, dean thank of you. Annenberg. Okay. Can I come back? Yes, you can. Right. I'll <laughs> be back. I hope so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>